Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I'm your host with the most, the one and only, and previously we had looked at a head-to-head -head performance comparison comparing the prior M1 Mac Mini to the all-new base M2 Mac Mini. If you happen to miss that video, I'll attach a card at the top right as well as plugging in the link in the video description. The thing is, Overall, from that video, what we learned was that the M2 is an incremental upgrade that shows modest gains, but shouldn't necessarily persuade or entice anyone to upgrade from an already existing M1 Mac Mini. The performance gains are in line similar to a typical S upgrade from Apple, some pretty standard stuff, to be honest. But what about those individuals that require and demand even more performance possible in a relatively small and lightweight package, all while not breaking the bank with alternatives such as the Mac Studio or the Mac Pro? Thankfully, Apple now has a solution for us with the M2 Pro Mac Mini. We're not going to waste much time and get into some benchmarking tests and some real world tests, but before we do, make sure to double check that you're subscribed as we got the new M2 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros heading to the studio very soon, as well as going over the new second gen HomePod and the brand new Galaxy S23 phones. So yes, we got a lot of good content on the horizon. So now that introductions are out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> Alright guys, as a reminder, both of the Mac Minis that we'll be testing today are the base model M2 Mac Mini and the base M2 Pro Mac Mini. The regular M2 Mac Mini starts at only $599, which is a very competitive price point, while the M2 Pro, with much more power under the hood, comes in with a starting price of $1,299 USD. So there's nearly a $700 difference between these two machines. So the ultimate question is, is it worth it to pay up all that extra money for that extra horsepower? We are about to find out and also stick around until the end of the video if you're still unsure as I'll plug in my social media handle so you can DM me with your particular use case and workload so we can determine which configuration is right for you. Okay, so now without further ado, as usual, let's start with Geekbench, sometimes known as the holy grail of benchmarking tests for its ease of use, as well as accuracy in reporting raw benchmarks that gives a decent indication at how well you can expect your computer to perform. So first, we ran a single core and multi-core test, and to my surprise, the M2 Pro Mac Mini model outperformed the regular M2 by sizable margins in the multi department, but is within the margin of error for single core which actually came in a few points lower, believe it or not. Take a look. The regular M2 Mac Mini scored 1946 for single and 8959 for multi. But over on the M2 Pro side, we see the single core score come in four points lower on single core, coming in at 1942. But on the multi-core department, we get a whopping 11,849. This represents roughly a 32% increase on the multi-core side, which is pretty insane. Now, if you think you're getting finessed because a single core score technically came in lower, don't. Again, this is within the margin of error anyway, and it makes some sense given that the major improvements to the M2 Pro versus the standard M2 is in the GPU department. Which leads me to my next test to test whether the M2 Pro shows significant improvements in the GPU department. I sure do hope so. So again, just like last time, we remain on Geekbench's platform, only this time we run both an OpenCL test and a Metal test, both of which tap into the GPU a lot more than a basic single core test. So here, as you'll see, the results are pretty shocking. Over on OpenCL, we see massive gains on the M2 Pro, with it scoring nearly 40,000 on OpenCL, whereas the regular M2 Mac Mini pales in comparison, but still comes in with a pretty impressive 27,341. This represents a roughly 43% increase in OpenCL scores, which again is nothing short but remarkable. And then on Metal, which more or less targets the performance power of your chipset's graphical potential, the standard M2 comes in with a score of 30,522. And the mighty M2 Pro comes in with a phenomenal 47,539. Pointing at the M2 Pro model being the go-to Mac Mini for graphics-related workloads or perhaps even gaming. But this is only a few tests and we'll need to conduct more research to get a better picture of what we're dealing with here. So now, as is customary, we fire up Cinebench R23, which as many of you know, really forces these chips as to put the pedal to the metal. Normally on MacBook laptops, this is the test that almost immediately starts to crank up those fans. But because this is a stationary desktop, and actually, the Mac Mini has excellent 
ethylene cooling, this isn't as big of an issue. So here again, after running this test, we'll receive a single core score and a multi-core score. So based off the previous Geekbench test, we can expect our single core scores to more or less be in line, and if I had a guess, it's in the multi-core department where we'll see the biggest gains. And my hypothesis was correct, with the regular M2 Mac Mini scoring 1643 on single and 8523 for multi-core. For the M2 Pro variant, just as I figured, our single core score again is within the margin of error and only comes in 6 points higher at 1649, but its multi-core best the standard M2 coming in at 11668. Hmm, these are some pretty interesting results, but I'm not sure these results are worth the $700 price difference, at least not yet. So once again, let's move on to our next test, which happens to be Unigen's Heaven benchmarking test. This test runs a variety of scenes and more or less mimics a gaming test, except not as intense. Some of these scenes will drop frames, however, especially if your chipset happens to be more on the boo boo side. For those that watch the M1 versus base M2 Mac Mini comparison, the M1 score on this specific test was god awful, essentially showing us that the prior M1 Mac Mini should not even be considered if you plan to use it for gaming or anything GPU intensive. However, thankfully, I'm happy to report that the M2 Pro improves greatly, and actually, some of these scenes look relatively smooth on the M2 Pro, whereas the M1 just looked choppy, laggy, but it was trying its best. Let's, let's give it some slack. So once again, check out the charts for comparisons in here. This is what I'm talking about. These are improvements worth the extra money. The average frames per second increased by roughly 18 frames, which is nearly double the average frame rate on the standard M2 chip, which by the way, Unigen Heaven also spits out a raw score, which happened to be 524 on the standard M2 and 968 on the M2 Pro. And actually, as you saw, the maximum frame rate on some scenes for the M2 Pro just barely exceeded 60 frames per second, which for a gamer is almost like the standard. All right, so these were some pretty drastic improvements, so let's head over to another graphics oriented test which is the good old gfx metal test gfx metal is similar to the previous heaven test in which a few scenes are shown on screen and it captures the frames per second with some of the scenes being more intensive than others my favorite four tests to run are the same as my last head-to-head -head mac mini comparison which happened to be the aztec ruins the car chase manhattan and t-rex test so i ran them but then i received some surprising and honestly unexpected results so, the standard M2 lagged only slightly on two out of the four tests, with the other two tests more or less being in line with each other. As you can see, oddly, all the tests hovered around 75 frames per second for the M2 Pro Mac Mini, with the standard M2 coming not far behind on the Aztec and car chase scenes, while being tied more or less on the T-Rex and Manhattan. Honestly, these results surprise me and are a bit contradicting, so once again, we need to dig deeper and find out more. So for our final benchmarking test that taps into both the CPU and the GPU, we head over to Blender, and Blender, similar to the GFX test, has three different scenes only on Blender, it offloads them to test them rather than showing them on screen. So I guess it's shy and has stage fright, I don't know, who knows. But here on Blender, we once again have a bit more clarity as here the results are again much improved over the standard M2, with the monster test specifically coming in with almost 100 samples per minute, which proves that the M2 Pro chip is plenty capable for most graphical demanding tasks. Okay, so now let's take a break from benchmarks and look into the SSD speeds because there was a bit of a controversy surrounding the base model M2 Mac Mini and it having a less than stellar SSD speed as compared to the higher storages. I personally think this is in typical Apple fashion and them cheaping out with cheaper components and essentially forcing you to fork over more cash if you want more storage, but most importantly, faster storage which I think is messed up, since I feel most consumers simply don't know. But as you can see, the claims are true that SSD speeds are slower on the base models, with the M2 Pro Mac Mini hovering around 2900 megabytes per second on read and hovering around 3100 megabytes per second on write speeds. If you recall, the base M2's SSD paled in comparison with its read speeds being more around the 1500 megs a second, whereas the write speeds are even worse coming in at 1400 megs a second. Essentially, these speeds are half of the 512 gigabyte SSD of the base M2 Pro variant. 
Kind of wild if you ask me. So as always, I like being transparent with you guys. If you happen to transfer extremely large files from the SSD card straight onto your max SSD, do expect the base 256 GB model to take roughly half as long to perform that import, if not longer. But all right, before we wrap things up, let's look at two real world tests to compare the time difference on how well these two computers can perform certain tasks. First, let's start with something I do on a near daily basis and a task I'm sure thousands, if not not millions of other people do, which is video editing. Now my editing software of choice is Final Cut Pro, and so similar to my last video, I shared the same 10 minute clip into Final Cut Pro, made light but identical edits on both Macs, and then exported them using the same exact compressor settings. For individuals like myself, exporting and rendering videos faster leads to a higher productivity. Likewise, some businesses which utilize video editing applications might consider speed at the forefront in a space where time is money. For this Final Cut export, the standard M2 Mac Mini exported the 10 minute clip in just 2 minutes and 27 seconds, whereas the M2 Pro did export it faster, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's light years ahead. The M2 Pro Mac Mini exported the same clip in slightly over 2 minutes with an official time of 2 minutes and 4 seconds, representing roughly a 19% increase in time saved. A few seconds may not sound like much on this 10 minute project, but remember, and many people will likely have much larger projects with much more intricate edits and that 19% improvement could prove crucial with those projects that far exceed 60 minutes plus. And finally, for all my photo editors, I got you covered. I use Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom almost daily for my YouTube work, and I do some photography on the side. This is a profession or hobby many people take seriously, so it's nice to get an idea at how fast your computer will allow you to work and ultimately make more money or upload more often. Just like last time, I imported 249 JPEGs and copied the same exact settings to all 249 images and then exported them all out of Lightroom. Here on the M2 Pro Mac Mini, the gains are pretty substantial, coming in with a time of just 1 minute and 14 seconds, whereas the standard M2 exported them in 1 minute and 41 seconds. I want to remind everyone that 250 images is nothing for many photographers, as it's not uncommon to take several hundred photographs in just a single session. So here, looking at it percentage-wise, this translates to roughly a 38% difference in exporting time, and once again, without sounding like a broken record, this percentage is actually very impressive because consider a 3000 JPEG export. That's where a 38% improvement really starts to make a big difference. So there you have it guys. Those are some of the differences between the M2 Pro and base M2 Mac Mini. Obviously, depending on your workload, you may have differences of opinions on whether forking over those extra $700 is worth it or not. But you do get double the base storage with a significantly faster SSD, massive gains to multi-core performance, as well as modest gains to GPU intensive tasks. From my testing, it is evident that it can help you shave off precious minutes over the long run. But that determination needs to be made by yourself. But I really do hope this video at least serves as a guide to help you make the right decision. As I always say, use cases vary and you should do plenty of research before dropping your hard earned cash on these very expensive machines. However, if you still have questions, I'll throw my social media handles up on screen right now. Feel free to tweet at me or DM me if you have further questions and I'll try to my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Just wanted to quickly mention that we officially crossed 1,000 followers on TikTok, so make sure to follow me on a couple of my socials as I'm starting to drop loads more short and real-like content. That's been it for now, guys, but stay tuned as the next Apple products I'm going to tackle are the new M2 MacBook Pros as well as the new second-gen HomePod. Make sure to stay hydrated. I'm clocking out for now, but I cannot wait to catch you all in my next video.